Hi, everybody, and welcome to Tremco Live. As you can see, I have a pretty interesting guest here as my co-host. If you don't know him, um, his name is Dr. Joe. That's what I call him, Dr. Joe. And a lot of you probably call him Dr. Joe with a lot of different pronunciations for his last name that are probably incorrect. But the correct, if I am correct in saying it, Joe, it's Steverick. It is. And uh, stop with the doctor part. That's only for court and bartenders late at night to get a drink. So <laughs> you know, Joe, Joe works just fine, okay? Yes, exactly. So Joe, thanks for joining me today. Um, I'm so excited to have you on our broadcast. Today is episode 67. I've done 67 of these episodes since the pandemic started. Well, 67 is an important number for me because that's the last time, 1967, my Toronto Maple Leafs won the Stanley Cup. <laughs> you know, it's only, I don't think, if I live to be 100, I don't think I'm going to live long enough <laughs> to see these you know, folks do anything. You know, But anyway, so 67. That's, so, that's awesome. That's interesting. Well, not awesome, but I certainly get it. I'm from Buffalo. And I live in Cleveland, so I certainly understand the feeling of defeat. <laughs> yeah, but you've got the best buffalo wings in the world. They actually name it after buffalo. That is true. I do have that. So food, food, food helps, right? Food helps. Yeah. So, Joe, I don't know if you remember when we met. Do you remember when we met? I think we met in Cleveland, didn't we? Well, slightly before that, but I, I was at one of your building science fundamental classes, and I had been reading your articles, you know, for a long time, and I didn't know how to pronounce your last name. And I was talking to one of your buddies, George Fritz, and he's like, if you don't know, you know, Dr. Stebrick, you, you don't know building science, Marcy. And I was like, who the hell is this Dr. Stebrick? And I'm like, I've been reading this other guy, Dr. Listerberick, or however I pronounced it back then. And he goes, it's the same guy. And I'm like, well, I'm attending his building science fundamentals class coming up here in Westford. And he's like, well, tell him George said hi. So I showed up at your class with a couple of my colleagues. And that was back when uh, classes were small enough. We met in we met in your kitchen for pizza afterwards. You know, <laughs> and, uh, it was it was nice. It was great. I learned I learned so much and I still continue to tell colleagues of mine. I'm like, if you're new to the industry, go to the Building Science Corporation website. They have so many interesting articles. You do such a great job of, of, you know, entertaining us while we're learning, I guess is a, a good way to say it. Well, you're, you're so kind, but um, the last couple of years, apparently we're not allowed to have a sense of humor. <laughs> I can't tell you, you know, dealing with, what do, you, what do you mean? That's hysterically funny. Oh, I don't know. That's, you know, and I'm like, it's, it's gotten so interesting for me that um, I teach at the University of Toronto, my alma mater. And they don't let me teach undergraduates. They say, "Well, I don't. They don't think they're prepared for you. You know, you're you're, you're old school, and you have a sense of humor. And 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 uh, we don't allow that in, in, in undergraduate education anymore. So it's it's just hysterical. It's not. That's that's crazy. Um, we have a we have a new colleague that started with us over at our building science lab, and I was talking to him yesterday, and he's like you know, I really want to attend this class. And I'm like, what is it? He goes, it's called the Building Science Fundamentals class. And I'm like, you definitely should. And then I go, and you should check out Tremco Live tomorrow because we have a special guest. And uh, so it'll be exciting. So shout out to Sergio. Welcome to Tremco. And this is the guy that you're going to be learning from in that Building Science Fundamentals class. So we trust you. We'll, we'll trust you a little bit. But yeah, so we did, we did meet in Cleveland too. Um, I think you drove through the night to, to attend something for me. So yeah, I was... I'll, uh, I'll appreciative came, of that well I, I i came from colorado and i gave up a ski day all right so i had to drive you know a gazillion hours and 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 i, I know at that point you thought i was completely strange why would a guy you know drive all night well the skiing was good all right yeah it's just you know there's their priorities yep yep i know definitely priority so a couple couple questions you know people want to know about dr joe excuse me joe my friend joe we got through how to pronounce your name. What's your beverage of choice before we get into the good stuff here? Well, I guess this is the good stuff. Do you have a favorite beverage? Oh, no question about it. Uh, red French Bordeaux wine, uh, followed by Italian Super Tuscan wine. Um, I do not drink California wine. Uh, I'd rather put sand in my eyes, but I do <laughs> like 
California. Now, uh, I am of Czech heritage, uh, uh, so I should like Czech beer, but I'm not from there anymore. I'm a canceled Czech. <laughs> Very funny. Like it. Well, I remember sharing a few few glasses of wine with you, uh, specifically in Aspen once. Um, and I think after that night, you said, I'll, I'll, I got the wine the rest of the week. And I'm like, yes, you do. After I picked up that tab. So, um, but yeah, lots of, lots of great experiences through the years, Joe. Um, it, it's, it's been such a pleasure, you know, learning from you, you know, uh, edu being educated from you. So as we continue to think about education in general, um, do you have a, the biggest lessons learned that you've, that you've experienced perhaps? Well, um, yeah, the, the smarter you think you are and the more cocky you get, the dumber you are. And um, I, um, the most dangerous time of my career was in my 40s when I thought I knew stuff. And that's when you make the biggest mistakes. When you're in your 20s and early 30s, everybody knows you're stupid and don't let you do stuff. Um, and then when you get into your 50s and 60s, you knew how stupid you were in your 40s and you know, in your 40s. And so yeah. um, that was that's life's lesson um, number one. Life's lesson number two is um, you're always better off learning from somebody. And uh, you, I got adopted by old folks. Uh, who took me under their wing and mentored me and and um, I learned from other people and I try to do the same thing myself it, it's it's amazing um, what you can do, learn from other people and if you and it ain't from the internet okay you know <laughs> yeah you, you, you gotta I mean this is a little different we're actually communicating and I can see your face yeah. not behind a mask and and, and, and yeah. really we, have a sense of humor, but um, you know, walking a site with somebody who's got a gazillion more years of experience than you, um, or listening to somebody explain, you know, the second law in a way that you know isn't in the textbook, is is spectacular. So those are those are the uh, um, two of the biggest lessons that uh, I've learned. And then accept the fact that you're going to you're going to make mistakes and um, admit them. Don't hide them. Don't say that, you know, just, just suck it up. Grow a uterus, grow a pear, and say you have a, you made a mistake. Because the sooner you can do that, the sooner you can move on. And they say, well, wow, this, uh, this person is, I trust them. Yeah. Um, you know, that minor thing. And these are, these are things my dad taught me. I just didn't get it when I was a kid. All right. right. <laughs> I get that. I get that. It's interesting because when I met George, we were out on the site and he goes, be honest with me. Tell me exactly what's happening. And I did. I told him exactly what was happening. And, I, you know, we forged a bond, you know, from that point on. So I think that that's that's great. That's great advice. You know, I love the, the be, being able to interact even even, you know, in this type of situation. We, we at least have like you said, we have our cameras on. We can see each other. We can communicate. Um, the last time I saw you was actually in Austin, Texas, right it was March, I think, 3rd or something like that, right before the pandemic, right before we all were like staying home, right? Um, we were out there for a, a building and closure council event. I think they did something like wind, earth, wind and fire or something like that. It was pretty, pretty interesting event. And uh, Dante, my colleague Dante and I were out there and we met you out at a bar with other people from the BEC. And uh, it was Keith Simon's birthday. I don't know if you remember that. I have a video. I was trying to pull it up. I have a video of us singing a, to him. He's such a good man, too. You know, he's somebody that you need to listen to. So I flew back to Aspen. I gave up a ski day. You know, Another to, ski day. <laughs> to do that. And, um, you know, I had one more week of skiing, and they, they, closed, they closed the ski lifts. And I'm like, what am I going to do with myself? I'm going to actually have to work. And <laughs> um, so it was just on a Sunday, and there was only a pizza place left open because everything was closed and under quarantine and whatever. And I'm ordering a pizza and I'm sitting down and a bunch of people come in and it was the funniest thing in the world. They were all uh, wearing uh, masks, but they're just masks over their eyes. And they're saying, well, the Pitkin County Health Department says you have to, you can't go out unless you wear a mask. So we got masks. So they're poking fun. And it was, it was, it was the only funny thing that happened for about two months. Yeah. Yeah. I bet. 
it's, it's, you know, we've come a long way, I guess, in, in some aspects, we've learned a lot. I think we've all learned how to use teams <laughs> and, you know, different, different things we probably didn't find acceptable in the past. I mean, for me, you know, not having maybe to travel from city to city as often, it's kind of nice to be able to do this, but um, when we are able to be out there, um, it's great. One of my colleagues said to me and she's classic. She was like, I didn't think I'd miss you as much as I did, as much as I do. <laughs> so you know we've, we've certainly our firm we've certainly become more efficient but teams and zoom do not replace yes. walking the site yeah we 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 walk half of the sites or half of the time that we've done but you have to actually be there this uh the zoom remote walk reminds me of david letterman's monkey cam remember where he had a bunch of monkeys he put helmets with with with, with cameras on them and so I'm thinking this is the you know the engineering architectural version of my monkey cam and I you, you know monkey can't <laughs> you need more than a monkey to yep. look at some stuff and so um, we're never going to go back to the way we were before but we're certainly going to adapt and you know you actually have to be physically there for a mock-up you need to be there for the first you got 200 windows going and you need to be there for the first one or the and the first water test and you know stuff like that you can't that you can't um, give to the monkeys with monkey care. Yes, I agree wholeheartedly with you. Um, you know, even, you know, as I've changed roles at Tremco, I still love going over and, you know, getting your hands dirty and, and checking out the material firsthand, right? It's not that I don't trust everybody else, but I think in order to really know and speak to something, you have to do that, right? You have to get your hands dirty. You gotta be a part of, part of putting it together and, and checking out, and that's why I love I love mockups. I love walking job sites. Um, that ability will well, never. Let me let me let me let you in on a little secret. I learn as much as the other people do. You know, gee, you know, I'm supposed to be this legendary guy that knows everything. Wrong. You know, you go there because you get better. You get better. They get better. You get better. Everybody gets better. It's it's it's. Uh, plus, you um, electronically, you can't build the, the trust once you've had some personal relationships then the electronic stuff becomes easy and because you want to let let them know that they can talk to you at any time and it's not the senior people you want the people that are actually doing the work and you know you tease them a little bit and, and they they will then feel comfortable in contacting you and and i can't tell you how many how many times <laughs> they've saved my butt because they've caught things that I haven't caught. And so you're helping me out by, you're not bothering me, really. Just talk to me, send me something. Exactly. Well, one of the one of the earliest articles that I read, um, if, if I look back, I think it was, it says the date is 2010. So we're going back in time a little bit here. Um, it was the Building Science Digest. I think it's the first one. It's the perfect wall. Well, the first time I wrote that was in 2005. Okay. And um, it was a kind of a funny story. I wrote a lot of peer-reviewed papers for the ASHRAE Journal. And one year I had seven papers, you know, one, for, one a paper for seven months. And then I just stopped, I stopped writing. And the editor of the Ashray Journal, Fred Turner at the time, called me up and said, Joe, how come you're not writing anymore for us? And I said, well, because your peer reviewers are insanely stupid and they don't have a sense of humor and all of the good stuff, you know, I can't put in and, and, and it's, it's boring. I'm not going to do that anymore. I don't need to do that. And he says, well, I'm... I'm sorry about that. And, and so, you know, we hung up and he calls me back an, an hour later and he says, well, what if I could get you to write stuff and not have to have it reviewed by our people? You could have it reviewed by people you trust. And I said, Fred, that's that's not legal. That Ashray doesn't allow that. And he says, well, I can. I'm going to call it a column. It's a column. And so that was the and I said, well, OK. I'll do that. When's the first one due? Tomorrow. And so I wrote that afternoon, I wrote Building Science Insight, what became Building Science Insight 01, the perfect wall. Um, and that started 
um, the stuff with, with ASHRAE and I've written, I guess, 130 of them over the last decade or so, and they're all on our website. So the deal was with ASHRAE is that they would run it first and then a month later I would post it on our, on our website. And so that, that goes back a long, long way. The reason that the 2010 is on that is I also update them. Um, so it's gone through several revisions. The last revision was apparently 2010. And I, uh, in, in, prepa in preparation for this video Zoom thingy Teams meeting, I reread it. I hadn't read it for a while. <laughs> that you had there, it. there will probably be a revision based on my you forcing me to read it to prepare <laughs> questions. Well, let's uh, let's pull up some of that information right now. Give me one second here. Um, yes, there we go. Um, I have to I have to have this up here first. Obviously, I've already introduced you, but I love I love this this information from your website. So, what does it say there? Fittingly, the Wall Street Journal has described him as the Dean of North American Building Science. He has a joy for telling tall tales to his protégés and audiences. So I, I, I just had to put that in there. I think that's that's awesome. The joy for telling tall tales and uh, um, enter entertaining us at the same time. So um, obviously, Joe, thank you once again You know for, for being that Dean to all of us in so many different ways, not only educating us in building science, but in in um, wine as well. We, we already mentioned this, but I just wanted to put that up there as well. There is several classes coming up. One's right around the corner here with the Building Science Fundamentals, uh, an amazing way to be educated. And a lot of those Building Science Digests and um, Joe's humor accompanies you throughout the journey of the Fundamentals class. Um, virtual, of course, right now, right? Yeah. And then, of course, the perfect wall. I, I took a, a couple different uh, a screenshots here just of some recent articles. And just in case people don't know you, here's your humor in action. Dirty Harry does insulation. Um, capillarity sucks. And the big blow are just to name a, flu, a few of what we've got in terms of entertainment. And specifically, of course, that perfect wall. Um, Joe, I, I give you credit. Every time I talk about air barriers, I talk about this article specifically, this Building Science Digest. I love, it's brief, it's concise, and it's just, I think it's perfectly written in terms of how simple yet complex this all can be. Well, uh, thank you for those wonderful comments. And I, I need everybody to know that I didn't invent the perfect wall. Um, the perfect wall, um, the whole basis of the physics goes back to before I was born in the early 1950s. And I basically took a bunch of black and white sketches and I added colors to them and simplified the terms. Uh, so I colorized stuff from the old days. I'm, I'm the Ted Turner of building science. I just simply took, and, I, and I, I came up with a name that for whatever reason resonated. And so, um, and you know, made it simpler because it was a good way to understand it. And, you know, when people have an, an issue with this is, well, you're not talking about structure. You're not talking about fire. You're not talking about all these other things. And, and you know, when I do my fundamentals class, I say, well, there are, you know, 15 things that we have to consider. Um, you know, fire is really important. Um, structure is really important. You know, plumbing and sanitation, all of these things are more important than this. So after you've done all of that, let's make sure that you keep the rain out of your building. Let's make sure you keep the air in your building and the air out of your building. Make sure that you control the vapor and add a whole bunch of insulation. But that's after you've not killed anybody. <laughs> I mean, you know, you, death is more important than irritation. All right. Yeah. And Quick death is more important than short death, and quick irritation is more important than long irritation. This is irritation kind of stuff, not death. Okay, just and um, you know perspectives, and people yeah. you know sometimes don't get the the perspective. I also tell them that look, you know, if you can't handle the rain, don't waste your time on the air. If you can't handle the air, don't waste your time on the vapor. 
If you can't handle any of those three, stop with the insulation nonsense. And, but people are monomaniacal with their insulation and they forget about all this stuff. I, uh, I remember having a lot of fun with um, ABBA, the Air Barrier Association of America. They invited me to be a, a keynoter. I, I've not been invited back, but I said, first of all, why would you name your organization after a bad Swedish musical group? And, and, and by the way, um, air isn't as important as, as rain. Uh, you need water control. You should have been called WABA before you became ABBA. And all of your air barrier stuff are really water control layers that have had an air control function added to them. And so water, more important than air, both water and air, more important than uh, vapor. I, 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 my line was, I've been doing this for almost 40 years, and I've never gotten a call at 3 in the morning, my building is leaking air. Yeah. That, that call doesn't come. But, yeah. you know, water call, you're going to get Definitely, definitely going to get those. Well, I know we, we've had, I, I like using this as that that basic understanding. We get calls all the time, though, Joe, as you can imagine, you know, they want to know exactly what our water vapor permeance is. And I, I want to know more. I want to know your substrate, your condition, your location, your use of building. I, I want to know all that. And then I'll tell you what my water vapor permeance is. But I, I want to know a heck of a lot more before I tell you that. Um, but, you know, many conversations I've had with you through the years talking about the perfect wall we came up with the idea collectively over some uh i think german pretzels in an aspen if you remember with my german my german colleague and uh and one of your friends i think from 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 germany brought over some pretzels for us and we came up with the idea of about talking about the perfect flashing and um i'll, I'll tell you what you know i i presented well i done 67 of these broadcasts and hundreds of presentations this is one of my favorite ones and it was in 2013. Can you believe it was that long ago? That's a lot. That, I'm like, well, you've, you've you've aged much better than I have, by the way. <laughs> I, I, I would love to revive this. Uh, if you, if you, I'm pretty sure there's. I'm pretty sure you have a painting in the attic that is getting older, and not you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Um, in, 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 in just to kind of explain what you guys are seeing here, obviously you're seeing the perfect wall, but then you're seeing the perfect flashing. And why do I have a map up there is because Joe sent me on a journey to find in all those little dots, what was important for flashing. So I, I showed up with important points from all those dots. And of course, from all of our guests at the symposium that year, I don't know if you remember, I did little videos of, of, of everybody kind of bringing up our 10 points and it's it's just as you mentioned you know it's it's a collective of of things we need to look at and there is an order of importance and you know the bartender was great because he, he asked us about water immersion as he was pouring a glass of wine so that you know, was, I, don't was, think that. Was, I remember that it's the third floor of uh i'm trying to remember the name of the bar but i remember the seat the table <laughs> and, and i remember the bartender i uh, i think he became an architect after that uh, <laughs> i think so I, think so. uh, I, I told them, I said, that I have two mottos. I said, if you want to save cash, flash, and don't be a dope slow. He says, <laughs> there you go. There you go. Good, bad. Yeah, we're done. That's all we need to say, right? <laughs> with, with that. Um, and, you know, and obviously a lot of different things from educational perspective that you guys have been working on. I love a cup of Joe. I think the other day you said, no way, Jose, cup of Joe. You know, any way we can use Joe. Um, makes a lot of sense. I chose, of course, this this picture to to highlight here because I love Betsy, so I have to have Betsy in the in the in the in the program as well. So um, everybody, check out more if you need more Joe. Who doesn't need more Joe? You can check out a cup of Joe. Um, get educated that way as well. Um, basically, you know, taking some of those building science digests to life um, on on their website. So another another great way to be educated. And last but not least. Um, Moisture control for residential buildings. Tell me about this. Why update the handbook? I took this from your website and I put it up there just in case you forgot. <laughs> well, it's been 30 years yeah. and um, the physics hasn't changed, but materials have changed. The energy flow across the assemblies have changed and our understanding of the physics have changed. I know it's hard to believe, but um, I actually know both a lot more than I did 30 years ago, but I also know that I understand a lot less than I thought I did 30 years ago. 
And so it needed to be done again. And um, it uh, it took longer than I thought, right? You're supposed to sit down and, you know, and now it, uh, you know, I, I, I'm not one of those journalists that can write thousands of words every day. Um, that it, you needed to get into the zone. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, the, the best zone was after a good couple of runs skiing before I open a bottle of wine. <laughs> That's, you know, the right could, moment. It could be two different books. It could be before <laughs> wine and the after wine, right? That could be so, interesting. So, so that we, we, we finally got it and it's uh you know please 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 buy it I'm, I'm now writing the second volume moisture control for commercial buildings so the idea is that it's going to be a, a two volume set uh one on commercial one on residential and of course the physics are the same for both but the practical applications of the physics obviously are are different for both and it's uh it's it's been a hell of a lot of fun and because um I'm the editor and publisher. Um, nobody's deleting my funny footnotes and my comments. <laughs> the, the footnotes are definitely a, a must see for sure. Um, entertaining all on their own. Um, I, I really am enjoying the read and I can't wait to see what's next. I'm trying to start a uh, Joe book club. Um, so maybe you can be our our featured guest occasionally, you know, kind of come in, give us your opinion on things. I'm sure you'd be willing to share. All, 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 all you got to do is, uh, you know, uh, ask. I, uh, I like your your team, and uh, you you have a sense of humor. And lots of folks don't have the sense of humor, and uh, you need to have that sense of humor. And yep. I mean, you need to be serious when you need to be serious, but come on. You know, yep. you, there you go. It's nice. It's nice to have a little bit of fun along the way, isn't it? Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> uh, and I'm I'm now a grandfather, and apparently oh my, my, kids, gosh. Yeah, my my kids are now telling me those are grandfather jokes. <laughs> now, they they don't they don't when I mention Elvis, they think of Elvis Costello, not Elvis Presley. Yeah. You know, I I you know they, they don't they don't they don't they don't get it right. You know, Gilligan's <laughs> Island. What's that? I mean, you know, I he's. Oh, yeah. Yep, I've become my father. Yeah, I see it. I, I see it for in me as well. Um, well, you know, I, I'm, I'm really excited that you were able to join me today on my 67th episode. Um, you know, <laughs> everyone check out Joe's book. You know, we aren't one of your things you've always said, you know, we aren't building with a bunch of rocks anymore. So we need to adjust and adapt and continue to learn. And if, if there's any takeaway, it's just that right. Um, engage with each other. And, and continue to be open to learning because there's always something I learn. I learn a lot every day and it's 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 definitely uh, it makes it it makes it more interesting, makes it more fun. That's for sure. So. Thank so. <laughs> well, thanks, Joe. Um, any big plans for the weekend? Um, a green, healthy salad and an unhealthy bottle of red French Bordeaux. Well, cheers. Cheers to that. Enjoy. And thank you once again. Have a great, safe weekend. And we'll check in again with you soon. Well, thank you very much, Marcy. It's a pleasure. Thanks.